hyphenated, uh, multi hyphenate, and um, yeah, I'm excited to talk with her. Let's see if she's here. Let's get it going. Oh, of course, she's on it. <laughs> well, oh, good 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 morning. Morning. How you doing? I am good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for curling your hair for me. Oh, I know. I was laughing. I was telling Tom because I'm like, yesterday when we FaceTimed, I was like, looked pretty, not gross necessarily, but no, I was like, not like, and I'm like, now I look very different. So, no, you look I great. Know. I mean, that's, that's what's funny about right now is there's so many lives and it's like, you still kind of have to get ready. Yeah, but you're like, you, I feel like you have a down because like all I, for me, all I have to do are really small things, but I get overwhelmed because I'm like, don't do small things great. So like, if you get your eyebrows in a great way, like you're, you're rocking it, right? Right. right, right. I can't do my eyebrows super well without a little bit of eye makeup, like right. also helping. So it just becomes yeah. a whole thing. It's I end up just doing it all the way. I know, I know, which is kind of a lot. <laughs> well, you look great. And um, are, how are you holding up today? How are you feeling? Good, good. I am super excited to be talking to you and loved the when you wake up um, listening sesh right before you started. Hey, hey, that's because nice. that's <laughs> funny because I was listening to a little Caitlin oh, Jarvis. Really? So, <laughs> um, so I don't feel bad today. Oh, no, you do not feel bad. Nice. Nice. I'm very excited to talk, though. Seriously. I Me think too. Awesome. This is, like, really hilarious. They're doing this since we are kind of in a similar friend group. And I know. No, I really appreciate you joining me. You and I have met each other a couple years ago, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we probably had met each other around yes a few times you know what i mean but yeah, like in an audition room you know totally like, like, yeah somewhere in the middle of hollywood which i honestly you know auditions are they're necessary but sometimes they can be a little like oh gosh like this is so draining right oh 100 percent. Totally. but right now since i haven't had one i'm like i can't wait <laughs> I can't like, wait I miss I it. drive all the way to Santa Monica and sit in a waiting room to audition. <laughs> <laughs> what I would give, what I would give to drive across What town. I would give. But we met through uh, our mutual friend, Shane Harper. Yes. Yes. Right? Which, this is someone I saw a comment go by earlier that said Nick versus Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Shane is in that. So I know. Far, Disney is more representative here today than Nickelodeon. I know, just saying. I feel like, just I mean, saying. I feel also like Shane brings some other things. He brings a little MTV. He brings now little stars coming That's up. That's true. He's really um, diverse. <laughs> he's really <laughs> diverse. We're just on the TV front. We're like, yo, Nick versus Disney. Let's rock it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was super funny. Well, Shane, it's funny because I knew him again-ish in the circle of people on Disney Channel and, and yeah, everything. Yeah. And then... We randomly, I had a session one day, um, and he was in the session with like three other people. And my session was just on my calendar was just like Mac brothers. And I hadn't worked with them or know who they were. And there was like four guys. And I was like, are these all brothers? What's, I'm so, is Shane's here? Did he have three brothers? And is he go by Mac? Um, and then we ended up writing one of my favorite songs. So, so it was actually great. Oh, that's amazing. Is that song out or is it? Still no, but it actually is going to be coming out very, very soon. Oh, it is! Yeah! Oh my god, that was not planned, but that was a I beautiful know. segue. <laughs> I know, totally. I'm like, great like segue. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting pretty pro over here, Laura. <laughs> I know, oh. killing it already, killing it. How did you meet Shane? Oh, gosh. <laughs> we, we met... Well, so, so I'm friends with his sister, Sam. Okay his older sister, but I think we met Shane at like a, a birthday party, like a mutual friend's birthday party. And were you, were you and David already together when you both, okay. Yeah. you both met Shane. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. So now David and Shane are just best buds. The, best, buds. the best buds. We're all best be. friends. 
And then Jake Scott came in the equation. And, and so then Jake Scott came into the equation and Rachel, and now we all make music and including Rachel. Incl uh, yeah, I mean, Rachel, I feel like Rachel actually is the most secretly musical talented of, all, of us all, even if- um, A comment from Rachel saying Queens. Ah, uh, I didn't- You know. I hate that with Instagram that we're seeing different comments at the same time. Like everyone sees different comments. I, oh, I just saw Rachel Scott say hi. <laughs> Well, and they're also very delayed, so it's like 20 seconds later, it's like Rachel's like, yes, I see. Like, oh, <laughs> <Totally. okay. laughs> Rachel, thank you finally for the respect. <laughs> finally getting the respect. She's so thank you so much, Rachel Scott. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Laura Morano, the one and only. You are born and raised LA, right? Born and raised LA, yes, Which I am I just, unicorn. Before we get into that, okay, so I'm from a small town in Georgia. Okay. Like, tiny, like, two stoplights, like, small, small, very typical, Love it. hear about it in a country song, small town. So I'm very <clears throat> typical, like, small town girl, big city dreams, like, <laughs> I gotta get out there. And for me, I've always wondered, like, is that like obviously you're still here you you know kind of have to be in LA for work and stuff but like have you ever been like I wonder what it'd be like to live in a small town well it's funny so my dad <laughs> what would that be like well a few things first of all it's I grew up like in the suburbs in LA so in a weird way okay felt a, like I didn't grow up in the city you know I grew right. up like in the suburbs and um, had that kind of small town away from the city vibe, which is awesome. awesome. Yeah. And then my dad, my dad is actually, was born in a very small town in Italy. And oh, wow. yes, and so, and then he moved to the Bronx when he was 13. Um, okay. And then he moved to LA when he was 22. So he has oh. a very fun, interesting story. Yeah. But, <laughs> Oh, it's funny, something that we kind of talk about all the time. Like, I've gone back to his hometown in Italy a few times. And it is, it's just funny. It is, like, such a different vibe. And it's so lovely in so many ways, right? It's like everyone knows each other. Yes. Um, I mean, Italy is just a whole other kind of situation because it was, it's like <laughs> heaven there. Like, you're on the beach. Um, you're like, does anyone actually work? I'm not sure, but I'm okay with this lifestyle. <laughs> like, I'm feeling it. It's, it's, it's yes. an awesome, awesome vibe. But yeah, it's funny. I feel like I didn't really totally, I feel like I'm living more in the city now because I've moved mm -hmm. than when I was growing yeah. up, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. I guess it's just like so typical. It's like in so many songs of like, I grew up and I wanted to get out into the totally. world. And I'm like, I wonder if everyone just kind of has this, desire to like leave what they know anyway yeah, totally yeah, yeah, yeah. i know you mean it, but kind of, I'm just, it's, yeah it's funny it's like i i do wonder what my life would look like if i wasn't born in la because i think yeah. that for me it was a lot to do with convenience of how i got into the entertainment industry so it's like right. if i wasn't in la if i wasn't another place i don't know i'm sure i would have found it in some way but in some other ways i'm like a big reason why I was even in the entertainment industry is because it was convenient. Like, I'm like, I'm already right. here, you know? Well, you got signed to your agent by just walking in and, and showing up, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. My sister, my sister's always like, don't you forget it. I did the work and you, you reveal the reward. Um, Can you tell yeah, that story a little bit? Because it's such a good story. <laughs> long story, long story short, basically, yes. It, my sister had begged my mom to become a professional actress because my sister and I both grew up in a children's theater and that my mom owned. And my mom was like, nope, no professional acting for you guys. Uh-uh, no way. It is not going to happen. Um, and then my sister was very persistent and begged her every day for two years. And my <laughs> mom finally got guilted into it but still didn't want her to do it. And did research about agents that turned down kids most of the time and was like, great, right. I'll bring my kids to that agent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Vanessa's eight, I'm five. And again, I wasn't going in to meet the agent. It was more like my dad's a teacher. 
my mom right. picked up my sister and yeah it just you made just sense to pick me up too because i'm fine <laughs> 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 yeah and vanessa went in came out agent asked to see my mom and my mom's like okay i'm ready for the agent to be like Vanessa is not ready yet. I'm going to tell Vanessa. She's going to realize it's so much harder than she thought it was. I follow right. my mom in the room and the agent's like, oh, um, we'll take Vanessa. And my mom's <laughs> like, that was not what? the plan. <laughs> and I come in uh, being obnoxiously adorable. And, and I say in the cutest voice I can muster, <laughs> well, I don't have an agent. And right. about me. The agent was like, honey, we'll take you too. And my mom's like, you gotta be kidding me. And we've actually yeah. been with the same agents ever since. That's crazy. Yeah, pretty that's much. such a wild thing. Like, I mean, but I don't know. I mean, it's so cool. It, there's so many different ways for like people to get into to acting. But I think you're right. It's like, if you weren't here, it's like, who knows if that, you know, would have been a similar story. Probably, I mean, totally. it wouldn't have been exactly the same, but. It's well, I, <laughs> well, cause I'm curious. So it would be the exact opposite for you, right? You grew up in a small town in Georgia. What, right. what was that vibe? So like, I mean, how did you no, get into acting? How did it all happen? Yeah, like no one, there wasn't much, like I said, it's really small. It's a great, charming place to grow up. Like I had a great childhood and like, the the main thing that you would do if you were like a young girl where I'm from is is take dance at the like local dance studio. So like you have a recital, you know, at, in the totally. winter, in the spring, and I started doing that at a young age, and I was super shy. And I my mom told me that my teacher, my dance teacher, was like. Caitlin comes to class and she does a good job, but like, there's no way she's going to go on stage, like at the recital. Like, there's no way. She's too shy. She's going to be scared. Brutal. And so my mom's like, okay. But then I guess when the time came, I went out and like did the dance and, you know, like loved being on stage. Felt alive. So totally. Came out with my shell. Just a natural born performer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like, so, so I would do dance and I started singing and was like oh I like to sing and would sing solos and like the church play and but I also like did gymnastics and was like I want to be um in the Olympics like that was sort of my uh trajectory which is maybe more insane than trying to be an actor um so I guess <laughs> <laughs> I guess I always had some uh big dreams but I yeah like I said this a couple times so people watching the live are probably like Yep, we know. But I, <laughs> like, I got into, I did this American Idol for kids, basically American Junior. Totally. Junior, and that was like a fast track into, you know, singing on TV, all of a sudden being on a show every week and being out in LA and just kind of getting thrown into this world. And then I was like, obsessed. So I came out to LA early, but through like a you know, reality show eventually and had... Okay, wait, did you continue doing gymnastics or, or any of that kind of situation? No, so, I, so I did gymnastics like up until I left for LA pretty much. Okay, can you still do stuff? Like, I, I, I just want you to know that my life goal is to be able to do a backflip. Um, really? I'm really in the time of my okay. life to be able to do that. And okay. I'm well, not any closer to doing it. No, so. you need to start now because it's only going to get harder. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like the other day I was, uh, um, and my sister Amanda, who you also are friends with, um, she did gymnastics as well. Cause we were like sisters. And so we would do everything together growing up. Of course, a hundred percent. Similar to you and your sister. Uh, we weren't on. But Jake Scott just said do a flip. So, which I'm all for. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I'll do a flip right now. <laughs> totally. <laughs> just, just have uh, 911 uh, ready to call. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we both did gymnastics. And the other day we were like, oh, we're always trying to be like, I wonder if we could still do that. So I was like, Amanda, like do a leap. Because we used to be like, you know, able to do, I used to, I was like practicing a backflip on the like balance beam when I quit. Which is insane. To think about. 
Yeah. That's insane. I know. It was insane. I, I could never do that. But I, like, I did a leap, like, just a run and leap. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't stretch before. I mean, it really makes a difference. Like, I was like, ow, oh, that. Like, I'm going to, now I'm going to hurt tomorrow from, like, a, a <laughs> one of like so it's like it's not really a matter of like can I do it because I could maybe still find the like memory of like stuff that I used to do, but it will hurt way more. <laughs> that's that's very fair. Um, yeah. but at least you were able to do it because I yeah. never was, but I so sad. One day will get someone well, do you have get, access get a to trampoline, like a trampoline practice. practice. Exactly. Yeah, you, you think that's okay? It's so off topic, and then we're moving from this. But this is no, crazy. it's fine. <laughs> Do you feel like a trampoline is a good way to practice? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, it's the only way to really learn how to do a flip. A backflip, um, and I, I will say, it. a backflip is easier than a front flip. Well, this is what I thought. This is, I did my research on that aspect, so. Good, 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 good. Because you would think, oh, it's not as scary to, like, go forward, but it's a blind landing. Yeah. So, like, no. You're it's like, better to... I, should I? <laughs> but with a backflip, it's like, the initial going back is scary, but then you see the ground and you're like, okay, I know what's coming. <laughs> uh, I am, this is, this. My dream is to be able to do it in a, in a performance. I actually have one song in particular that I'm never even sure if it's gonna actually come out, but <laughs> that I literally, I was showing Tom the other day and I'm like, and this is the part right before the major high note that I would do a backflip. So <laughs> I would do a backflip, then have a second to breathe, then my dancer would hand me the mic and then I would do the major high note. Um, probably never gonna happen, but Dream big, kids. Dream big. Exactly. If, any, if there's anything we've learned, it's that you got to dream big. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Just look, when this is over, we'll go to like a gym and we'll get some reps in. And then I, I'll, I'll help you do it. I need to, I'm going to learn. It will, whether, I mean, again, I probably should learn now because it's not something it's like, oh man, when I'm 40, I'm going to go into it. I feel like <laughs> 40 is going to be 40. Yeah, now's the time, Laura. <laughs> Now oh, or never. Oh, well, man. not now. I guess we can't. I mean, we could we could get out in the yard and do some. And just, I know it's way scarier. Uh, I will say, anyone who's watching, if you want to do a backflip, maybe don't look up videos on YouTube because I did, and I felt like all of them were going to put me in a position to really get hurt. Like one was like outside no. on the grass, and he's like, first step is you put your hand behind your ankle or something crazy. And I'm like, I'm going to die. So I'm not <laughs> there are stages, there are things to get before a back flip that you can aim for totally. like back bend and then like a back handspring. Anyway, oh man, all this <laughs> talks really uh, bringing back some memories. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? We would have thought? Who would have thought? We did not plan this, but um, this is good. <laughs> I mean, so so I basically was like doing gymnastics. I got the audition for American Juniors. It went well, and I was like, I guess I'm going to LA. Um, and I just kind of never went back to wow. gymnastics, which is kind of sad. I mean, I did leave LA. I went back to Georgia after American Juniors and was okay. like, uh, how do I get back to LA? Um, but I ended up finishing high school, moving out here, and then that's kind of when I got an agent and sort of started getting into acting. And it's interesting because I feel like you and I sort of have a similar story, which is we both grew up loving music and wanting to sing and, you know, really having that be a passion and then kind of finding our way into acting a little bit more indirectly. Totally and and finding having that be something that kind of took over the forefront <clears throat> for a while. Yeah, I feel like at least, at least for you, like you, like started had that start with, on a singing show right? right i'm like always loved music and just acting was faster and something i kind of fell into because i was a younger sister that yeah um, wanted to be like my older sister and yeah, yeah. <laughs> really years and years passed without really getting any sort of opportunity for for music but yeah so you came back and just kind of fell more into acting a little bit 
Yeah, I mean, it was like one of those things that I went back and I was like, you know, I had no idea how to get into the music industry. I had just kind of gotten lucky and ended up on this, you know, network kind of TV thing. So it sort of totally. confuses you because you're like, well, I have this big thing, you know, like it's going to be easy for me. But I think you're not really honing any type of skill on a show like that. You're just getting experience and, performing, but. And I think, at least for me, in my own kind of unique experience, acting is something that's very realistic in, in some ways to start as a child. You can actually professionally right. start doing it, acting as a child, right? A lot of yes. people do. You can't really professionally do music as a child. No. I mean, I'm sure there are different ways. I feel like Bruno Mars, right, was like some sort of mini so Elvis cool. impersonator. <laughs> right, people, right. right. I, I feel like, but, but you don't really, like, you're not going to get a record deal when you're 11 or 12. That's true. If you do, you're not going to get promoted or actually put on music until a way later, right? Yeah. Like, they might develop you and work with that. Oh, but you know, acting, you kind of can start as a child. Which yeah. Is what I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so your first, your first gig was a JC Penny commercial, right? Yes. Wow. Oh, man. I know. Wow. I was crazy. I was five and crazy. And <laughs> kept calling the director my dad with my <laughs> real dad there on set. It was super awkward and weird. You were just was, really in character. I guess, but the director wasn't even playing my dad. Oh, so I'm not really, you're, you're fine, director. I'm not really sure. No, I was, I, I don't think there's any way around it, Caitlin. I was just a very weird, odd, strange child. You know, I think we'll give you a pass. You were five, <laughs> if you were on a commercial. You got confused. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and then you, you got a, you had a small part in Superbad, right? Yes, it uh, made me very popular in middle that school. Is, that is a cool credit. Well, because a lot of my other stuff, my friends never could watch. I did the year before, I did do Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? So that was something where kids were like, my friends were actually, oh, you do act. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, you aren't mine. Yes, totally. <laughs> but super bad was like the cool factor. Like, and yeah. I had a super small part, but it was, oh. Oh, was, yeah. Oh, you're, you're, in a, you're in a pretty funny funny, very successful movie that's yeah. very cool for Oh, yeah, guys. and, like, a very just, like, culturally, like, relevant film. I would have carried oh, that. Oh, totally. I didn't, I didn't watch it for years. Would you say? <laughs> I was just like, I would have talked about that for years after. <laughs> well, I didn't watch it for years. Well, that's true, yeah. You were really, you were too young. Yeah, and I, and I read the script, and I was traumatized <laughs> um, because yeah. I was 11. Um, sure. And I remember one of the writers, Evan, who obviously the character Evan is based off of. But what I love about it is Seth Rogen and Evan wrote it when they were 13. And then just like, <laughs> kept, yeah. And then they kept just like revising it over the years. Right, right. Um, yeah. And it's like based on them. It's Seth and Evan. Um, right. And Evan, I remember we were writing back in the van and he found out that I read it and he was horrified like <laughs> horrified he was so embarrassed he like turned red and my mom's right there my mom's like yeah no you know it's definitely it was an interesting script but you yeah. know yeah. I, laura knows to always read He's projects a <laughs> yeah let's take it very take seriously it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then i watched it years later and i was like this film is awesome i yeah. was i feel so lucky to be able to be a part of it yeah that's amazing and then jumping ahead but you were also in ladybird right Yes, yeah, same cast director. Another but. cool, like, iconic yes. film. Yeah, that was so cool. awesome. A same cast director, so Allison Jones. Oh, Allison is Jones. A rock star. We love you. Love you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, I feel so lucky to be a part of that project. What yeah. an incredible project. And I had a, so such cool. a small part, which I am, like, beyond, I would have played an extra. Like, I would have, I right. would have. I would have done anything to be Same. in that film. Um, yeah. So to be able cool. to be in that in any sort of capacity was so special and so incredible, like yeah. amazing. That's so cool. So, so then when you did Austin and Alley, like that was, you know, up until that point, you loved music, but there wasn't really a, an opportunity for you to like put it out or kind of like 
be able to release music. And so when that came up, was that exciting because the character was a songwriter and it oh. involved music and hundred percent. What, what was that like auditioning for that and being Yeah, a so you know, before that, exactly what you said, I didn't really have like that opportunity, but I try to make it, right? I try yeah. to make some sort of opportunity. And so I was doing amateur recording sessions and yeah. songwriting sessions. Um and I I had a MySpace. Uh, of course. Had a SoundCloud back in the day. Uh -huh. You know, I look back at the songs and I kind of cringe a little bit. Not because wow. the songs are bad. I'm actually very proud of the songs. Okay. I just did not know how to sing and record <laughs> songs. So it's just like, I sound terrible. <laughs> but um, well, I think we all, if we, if you've been doing any type of entertainment related thing throughout your life, you're just bound to have things to look back on and be like, Hmm. Okay. Well, now I just well, have to. Right. Cause you go, you go to a moment where you're like, how did nobody tell me it was bad? I'm like, I know. Uh, oh my like, God. I don't even get me started on like shows that I played and outfits I wore and like, I know you oh, just kind of can't, you just can't beat yourself up, but whew. you're like, I, man, so I mean, you, got, you got to live and learn, right? Live yes, and learn. Um, live and learn. We, we so, are trying our best. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so Austin Alley was obviously so exciting and huge for me. I, the year before, year and a half before, um, I had actually done a Nickelodeon pilot. Oh, and I know. I'm trying to come over to the Nickelodeon side. Crazy. I know, yeah. right? The Nickelodeon versus Disney about <laughs> This is a big rivalry, okay? <laughs> By the way, I always felt like it's funny because it's so not a rivalry between the actors, but like low key, everyone, it is a rivalry between the executives. Like it oh. is a very, very real rivalry. <laughs> Where <laughs> you thought, like, before I went on, I was like, oh, it's probably hilarious like it's probably totally not real but like you talk to the executives it's real yeah like, yeah they're like uh-uh totally yeah so I did this Nickelodeon pilot and I actually um I was in this kind of loop for 18 months about are they gonna pick it up are they not gonna pick it up and they didn't end up picking it up and I it's funny I was definitely disappointed but there's also a part of me looking back where I was such a different character oh are you still there yeah yeah is it gone? Okay. It, no, no. It, it did the spin for a second. I was like, oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, I'm like, come back. But, yeah, so I was, like, the character that I played on that pilot was I had my braces. I had my glasses. Yeah. Like, I was a very different character that I'm not sure I would have been ex as excited about growing up doing as I was doing Austin Alley, right? Right. So – got the braces off, started high school. <laughs> and I started, I, I had never worked on a Disney Channel uh, show or anything before. And I obviously was a huge fan of Disney, um, as anyone would be as so many people. Yes. Um, and I was auditioning for something else and got quite close to something else. But I read Austin Alley and The Breakdown. And I was like, I am Alley. Like, I, I need this character like, yeah, yeah she's a songwriter she's gonna sing like this is you yeah. know some disney shows have music some don't have music but obviously if you're doing disney channel you're probably missing at some point but austin ali had music it was right. literally yeah, my dream show on it. yeah totally yeah and so i was like i have to do this like i yeah. have to be this character and the casting director knew me pretty well and she's like no you're not ali like you're <laughs> ali's supposed to be shy and an introvert and you're not that like and i'm like no but i'm I can act. I'm shy. <laughs> Come on. I'm like, very shy. <laughs> He's like, oh, God, calm down. Good night. <laughs> um, and then she also was like, Disney and the producers, um, who Kevin and Heath, who are the incredible producers who I'm obsessed with, yeah. always claim that this wasn't true. So who knows? I'm okay. confused. But they were like, they want a blonde for Allie. They don't want they don't want a brunette. And I'm like, I'll dye my hair. I'll dye my hair blonde. That's easy. <laughs> so I got close to another Disney Channel show and you know, kind of my team was like, Hey, you know, I you do you uh, yeah. You sure you don't you sure you don't want this? <laughs> um not like that. But they couldn't find the girl, so they finally saw me and I did the scene and they were like, We wanna test you and so I tested for it and it's funny I was um 
Ross and Rainey were there for the test, and of course, a bunch of other people. Yeah. And, you know, tests for anyone who's watching, you know, Kayla, they can be quite brutal, right? It's oh, like gosh. horrifying. And, uh, horrifying, yeah. right? Uh, and even though everyone on the Disney casting side is pretty lovely and knows they're dealing with kids, you know, basically there comes a level where they mix and match people, and then they'll be like, hey, um, you're awesome. You can go now. Like, you know, have a great day. Right. You kind of knew when you heard that, that. Oh, my heart sinks <laughs> just thinking about that. <laughs> brutal. It's brutal. brutal. We've all been there. All been and you're there, what, so. like 15 at this point? Yeah, totally. Oh, it's like yeah. brutal. Uh, so I'm, I'm at the test, right? And I guess at the end of the test, and there's one person for Austin Ross. Knew Ross was going to get it. Um, because he was the one, like, they, he kept going in, right? Like, he kept going in, they kept mixing, matching a bunch of girls with him. Um, and Ross is so classic Ross, and he's, like, in the corner of, like, the waiting room, like, playing guitar. He's such an introvert, right? <laughs> um, and I was like, no one else brought a guitar except Ross. Like, that, that's all you need to know about Ross. And okay. It's my favorite thing about him. <laughs> yes. Rainy was there. I had known Rainy for a while, and sure enough, at the end of the test, there was one person for Trish and that was Rainy, right? So we got one person for Austin Ross, yeah. one person for Trish, Rainy. Yeah. And then there's two girls for Allie. It's oh. me and this other girl. Um, and is she like blonde? Blonde. Oh. Totally blonde. Totally lovely. Um, yeah. And if things cannot get any more awkward, we all get brought into the room, all four of us, one big happy family. Um, and no. they have the other girl next to Ross and Rainey and like take a photo and film that. Just like them standing still. Not what? Then, then she goes and then uh, she goes, still in the room, just goes off to the side, then I go in. Oh um, my God. And just <laughs> so awkward. Oh. Um, and then we left and it was, I, I had no idea obviously if I had gotten it or not. How did um, you feel after that? Like, oh, I'm like, like, I had, yeah, there just, was, the one thought I had was I felt just on a visual standpoint, I always say, guys, and maybe this is just, this is just making myself feel better. I don't know if you feel this way, Caitlin, as well. <laughs> but when you get to a certain point at the end, it is un unfortunately and fortunately in some ways about looks, right? right? Like it's not really about talent anymore. Right. It is you kind all of there's like a visual. You all made it to this point. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I did feel like she and Ross looked like, like brother and sister. And I'm like, that could have been strange, but maybe that's what they wanted maybe to go for. I don't know. Right, right. Um, and so I didn't know for a few days and then I found out I got it. And by the way, the other girl who didn't get it, like has done very well. Like, yeah, she, oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm has sure. not affected it. Like she's, she's quite successful. She's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's fine. She's fine. Um, <laughs> but a few days later, I found out that I got it and I, Oh. Great. Okay. It was it was amazing. Yeah. It was I, love I was that so happy. Story because I love that they initially like wouldn't see you, didn't think you were right for it, and you just <laughs> yes. wanted it and you knew it was yours and went in and got it. I mean that's so cool. And I'm sure now it's like there was no one better for that part. Yeah, I do think also all four of us, so Caleb um uh, came later, right? He wasn't in that uh, original audition and they weren't even doing Des. Right. Um, but I do feel like all four of us, it was this thing we all talked about all the time. Like we morphed into the characters and the character morphed into us. You know what I mean? And like, right. I think yeah, yeah. the writers wrote the characters more similar to us as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so it, yeah, it totally was, I can't imagine any other person playing any of the other roles. Um, and it's, it, it is one of those things where it felt like lightning in a bottle. It felt like we all truly loved each other. And I've been on sets where, you know, you sometimes don't necessarily get along a lot or you sometimes don't, you know, like love each other. We loved each other. Yeah. We loved the crew. Aww. We loved our producers. Like it was just such a good vibe. And I, yeah. I still will, I still can't believe yeah. I lucked out that way. Seriously. Aw, yeah. that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so with like- Wait, 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 but I want to know, I want to know, Switch, I want to oh, know Big God. Time Rush. Oh. Tell me everything. Gosh, I mean, it's weird because 
uh, and I, I had Kendall from the show uh, on this a couple oh, weeks ago. Oh, I saw. Yes. <laughs> I <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> um, um, amazing. But, but we were saying, like, the original pilot of, like, the original cast didn't include Kendall. So, like, it was another guy. They had to end up doing, like, a bunch of recasts and, like, sort of reworking some stuff. But, I mean, I honestly hardly remember audition like I, I i was so you blacked like, out <laughs> out of my element like i mean i think it was before i even like officially lived in la and i was just kind of flying Crazy. back and forth and you know my people would be like oh there's an audition for this thing and i would go and but i mean i can't describe how out of place i felt like i just was like but it was, there was something kind of nice about not knowing too much and just kind of going in with like, totally. like just sort of like, oh, uh, like, I don't know what do we, we have to sign in. Like, I just didn't know any of the things <laughs> that you're like supposed to know. And I guess that sort of came through in my read because I think like, you know, after I got it, I remember talking to Scott Fellows, the like creator of the show, and he was just like, you know, I just like, you said that line different than everybody else. And I just liked it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and that's what's so weird too about, you know, auditioning and acting and like every, everyone could play so many different parts. It's just all preference of like the creator, the writer, the director, like how you so subjective, it, your tone of voice. Like there's so many different elements that you just have to go in and be like, like I, I, I'm always trying to get back to like that, that place of like going into something because it was just so. Um, I mean, you never can, but yeah, I, I was just stoked. Like I couldn't believe I got the part. I was just like, oh, I did. Like <laughs> I didn't know it was like a. I and also at the same time, I didn't know that that was rare. Like it, as crazy as it sounds. Totally, totally. <laughs> and. Um, but but originally it was just like one line at the end of the pilot at the end of the original pilot that never ended up airing and I like pushed someone in the pool and said like something I can't even remember <laughs> but I was like oh I don't know like you know it, it wasn't like a main character at the time so it was just like you crazy know, I was about the four boys so it was like oh and you'll maybe come back and play this like love interest at some point but it was a full year until like they picked it up and recast and were like actually filming season one and then they brought me back a little bit of a different slightly different character for like episode six or something and then I was kind of off and on it for a few years and again I feel the same way it was amazing it was like such a fun set such a fun place to like learn and you know, get comfortable filming and acting. And yeah, it was like my first thing really ever. I mean, I had done a couple commercials too, but um, yeah, it was crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. it's funny. And we, we've talked about this. It's like, you just look back because I also know we've also, as many successes and incredible things that we feel has happened, there's obviously moments that you feel of failure and not so great mm -hmm. things but mm -hmm. you look back and you're like man everything happens for a reason i feel like for, that. for sure, for sure. And yeah i i really everything that has happened to me in my life be it good bad hard easy anything it's like ah oh, you, you just kind of put the 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 puzzle together you put the pieces together and you're like this makes sense that happened because this never would have happened and then yeah. this never would have happened you know so for sure it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy to think not to get not to get super butterfly effect crazy deep. Hey, yeah. But this moment, who knows if this moment would happen without all these other things happening? Very yes. true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been putting out music like since you did Austin and Alley, it was like, okay, like this has opened up some doors for me to like really be seen as more of a musician and songwriter. And so you've been putting out music, you know for a few years now, right? Like since you were- Yeah, yeah, so basically, again, also at the same time I was doing Austin now I was in high school. So I, I kind of, there's a few reasons, but I kind of made a little bit of a decision um, just for a few reasons, right? One, I was in high school. Two, I 
felt very insecure and felt like as soon as I finally got the dream and what I wanted and these music doors opening up, I'm like, oh my God, am I even talented? Am I good? Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm not even, I am I'm not ready. Right. Um, and yes. so I think for, for a while, I, I didn't put out any music as a solo artist during Austin Alley. And again, like few reasons for that, right? Yeah. Reasons that made sense. I think also I felt like I wanted to find the right place for that, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah and so finally when we were getting to the end of Austin Alley, I'd, I'd already um, found my managers at the time um, at Austin Alley opened up that door, which was amazing. Yeah. And then I got this opportunity to get a record deal from a, a a bit of like this random little big machine mm -hmm. that I never would have put two Austin Alley and Big Machine together, but it kind of just happened naturally. And so again, Austin Alley opened these doors and I felt like at that point, okay, I was finding a little bit more of my artistry, but I still had a long way to go, and, sure. which I now look back and, and realize and um well and I feel like if you're not looking back and being a little embarrassed you're not like growing. Totally. So I have to say I'm I feel actually I look back at the songs I put out I'm still so proud of them. I put back um out Boombox yes. which is still my most successful song to date and I put out a song called La La that I look back with such love and I feel like that song never had a chance and I'm still bitter about it. Uh. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, there's some other music that I wrote that I'm not at all in any way ashamed of, but it just totally didn't really feel like me, right? And yeah. the whole situation ended up proving to be a very challenging situation and it wasn't really the right place for me, kind of no fault to anyone. Um, yeah. And so I was lucky enough to kind of get out of that deal and I found myself in another record label um, and I found myself in Warner Brothers, which yeah. was such a different vibe and so amazing. And I was amazing for different reasons. And like, I was obsessed with everyone who had signed me. Uh, it was just like, oh, this is incredible. Um, and I just written a song at the end of the first record deal that I've now actually put up but it was called when you wake up okay and and i remember just being like that song acted as a catalyst for all the rest of my music because i was really writing this kind of pop rock music i was actually all over the place i had boom box and then i had like pop rock music yeah, and I, had yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I was just so all over the place and so when you wake up really kind of solidified me of like oh i love this music yeah. i love how i sound i love writing it yeah. i love listening to it you know and yeah. it checked all the boxes for me so cut to me being a Warner Brothers and me writing some of the best music I'd written thus far. I was so proud of it. Yeah. Um, and that deal was also, you know, record deals take a really, really long time to do. Yeah, like, yeah. which is something I did not know beforehand yeah. before I got my first one. Um, yeah. I remember I announced the deal the day of the Kids' Choice Awards, which was like the best day of my life. Austin Alley won a Kids' Choice Award. I won a Kids' Choice Award. Oh, huge. But announced this and didn't like the president and I were like, we should announce it. It's going to be great. Yeah. But like we didn't, the deal wasn't done yet and like wasn't done for like five months later. <laughs> so that wasn't great, but whatever, yeah. it's fine. Hey, you know, you're um, excited. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh gosh. <laughs> so, not a ceiling fan. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, I was at Warner Brothers and then I got this opportunity to do a movie with Robert De Niro and I was like, oh, let, yes, can, guys, can I do this movie? Because my deal had just, yeah. literally just finished. And yeah. they're like, yes, make it happen. Yeah. So I did the movie, and then I got this opportunity to film a movie that was such a passion project for me that was called Saving Zoe yes. that I produced yes. with my sister and my mom, and yes. Vanessa and I starred in it. So cool. And so that second time I was like, oh, I'm like, hey, guys, can I, can I film that movie too? Yeah, oh. yeah. And they're like, yeah, but, you know, we'd love to send you to Sweden and New York to write. And I'm like, oh, this is oh, the dream. What a, what a hey. whirlwind. <laughs> and so as I was filming Saving Zoe, um, one by one, literally everyone who signed me uh, left or got fired. And I was like, oh, no. You know, I, had, I just knew it wasn't great news, right? So it was like, oh, God. 
every time someone, I thought someone got fired or left, I was like, oh God, <laughs> this is, it literally was like a one by one situation. Oh gosh. Um, and so then cut to October where I was still writing and I still was at Warner Brothers, but it was not looking great. Um, yeah. And then the movie that I was doing with Robert De Niro was a Harvey Weinstein movie. And so everything happened October 2017. Yeah. For, in my opinion, very good reason. Like, I'm oh, yeah. really happy the Me Too movement happened and happy that everything oh, happened the way it did. Yeah. Um, and just an effect of that was any of those movies were, like, not going to come out. So yeah. I'm like, oh, great. So all this stuff that I've spent in the past few months working towards right. and working on yeah. um, is just not going to see the light of day. And then uh, cut to the icing on the cake the day before my birthday uh, in November, I like officially got dropped by Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, yeah, my birthday was the next day. <laughs> and you know, they were kind of a mess, which I'm sure they would say, like there was just a lot of changes happening, yeah, right? Um, yeah. And so literally on my birthday, they sent um, flowers to me being like, happy birthday from your Warner Brothers family. Oh, like, no. love you, glad you're part of the family. Uh, and I'm like, <laughs> uh, I'm not. <laughs> like, this sucks. I'm not part of the family. Uh, I want to uh, be. But um, so then, you know, I kind of, that hit me hard. I, you know, it's yeah. funny when things kind of didn't work out with the first record label, I was like, oh, you know what? I am... I'm okay. Like, I'm, this is a blessing in disguise. Like, I knew it very immediately. And I was really, and everything kind of was happening really quickly afterwards with Warner Brothers. And so there were things that were a bummer about that first right. record. Like, Boombox, the music video got taken down really quickly before I could really even explain things to my fans. And so right. that was a bit of a bummer. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I'm going to move past that. Warner Brothers, like, killed me a little bit. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I was gutted. Mm. So then... I decided to do stuff independently because yeah. I felt like, man, I had been with two record labels. Both weren't great experiences, not necessarily anybody's fault, right. just kind of how it happened. Right. And I'm like, I just want to release music. And yeah, independent, I feel like you actually can make that happen. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I mean, thanks for sharing all that. I, I think <laughs> it's like helpful to hear, for people to hear like how much goes on that isn't really advertised because it's all kind of behind the scenes and weird, but it's controls so much of what happens with our careers. And it's like such a weird limbo to be stuck in, you know, with like labels so stuff weird. and this movie, this incredible opportunity, like could have never seen that coming, like that being taken away. And I think those moments are like really, really tough to get through and to remain positive and to keep going and to keep like, to pick yourself back up and be like, all right, like I'm not gonna like let that deter me from from putting music out and doing, continuing to try and do what I wanna do because you still have so, so much ahead of you and you have such an impressive career so far. And I think it's probably a really cool opportunity. And like you said, when you look back, you know, it's always easier to see like, oh, okay, I can totally. see the meaning of that a little bit more. But when you're in it, it's it's really tough. But I think, oh, yeah. but I think being independent is really cool for you. And I think, you know, for anyone who can do it, it's like, like you said, a chance to experiment a little bit with your sound and like really try and find your lane and like what you want to say. And it gives you the chance to just try. Is it, it fro Caitlin, is it frozen for you or? It is frozen for me. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure. <laughs> I wonder if it's frozen for everyone else. Luckily for me, it's frozen on a beautiful uh, frame of you. <laughs> I feel like I'm a deer in headlights. Um, um, I don't know. I guess we'll just keep talking. Is it frozen for ever for everyone? <laughs> I think for so, right? <laughs> I feel like because I can't see comments. Can you see? Oh, you can't see comments. Comments are still coming up for me. Oh really? Yeah, I'm 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 like it's oh, it's no. frozen, it's done. I think it this happened to me actually with, with Kendall when I was doing his live, it froze for him, but everyone else could still see him. Oh no. Oh really? People are saying it's frozen, it's frozen. Oh no. <laughs> 
Oh, now we are just getting to the meat of it. Can you still hear Laura, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, I was really on a roll there with my... Uh... I, I was loving it because I, I, I totally agree with everything you just said. Uh, okay, well, I don't want... Should I try and like end it and bring you back in just so Okay, people can still hear, but let's try and get her back in. Wait, Laura, if you're watching, can you request again so that I can Am I not going to be able to find you? All right, there she is. <laughs> it was going so well. <laughs> oh, okay, we're back. Uh -oh. okay. Perfect timing. <laughs> Well, you know, it's getting close to the hour mark anyway, so we could probably talk forever. Seriously, actually, I actually feel like we literally could. I, mean, I, so did, wanna, I did want to sort of turn a question on you that I get a lot, and maybe, you know, you can, uh, well, whatever. I mean, I don't think anyone's complaining if it goes over an hour, but, like, I always get asked, as someone who does music and acting, people are always like, how do you balance it? Which one do you like more? If you had to choose, which always just sort of like the worst is, yeah, it sort of bums me out because I'm just like, well, um, I don't want to choose both. I enjoy, or I don't want to choose one. I enjoy doing both, but I get, you know, sometimes it can be hard to balance. Oh yeah. Head. I mean, so I was just going to see how you feel about that question and, or like what comes up for you. It's so tough. It's really, really tough. And I feel like I wish I had a more concrete answer on how to solve the balancing issue. It's, right. I haven't found it. Yeah. I still struggle with it. Um, yeah. You know what? It's just a matter of t time management. And what's tough is that, um, you know, not everyone's going to go by your schedule. But I have found though there are a lot of struggles and challenges that come with that. Anyway, by being independent, right, by releasing music independently, by trying to produce my own stuff on the acting side, yeah, um, right. I actually have managed to get some sort of small amount of control over scheduling and over different things. Yeah. So that has made my life easier, but I there's a lot of struggles and challenges with releasing independently. And yeah. um uh -oh. Are you good? I'm frozen again. <laughs> I know. <it's> so... <laughs> How does this keep happening? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> is this the universe being like, this is enough? I think the universe is a little bit like, maybe, maybe <laughs> you guys have talked a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, now I'm fully frozen. No comments. No anything. Ah, uh, okay. So I can see comments. Okay. Now it's the opposite. So I can see comments. I just can't see you. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> okay. Should, what do you think? Should we go in and out again? Or should we just, should we just end it? Okay. Caitlin, you, it is up to you. I'm down for whatever. <laughs> All right. What, or is anyone saying anything in the comments about what they want us to do? <laughs> Um, there's just a lot of hi, Laura's. I think there was a lot of, a few questions for both of us. There's oh. some haze. Okay. I'm um, well, quite dash. It's like, I hear Caitlin. Okay. Desiree says in and out. So okay. maybe she. So, all right. Quite I'll, dash said don't end. I'll Mrs. Remove, Thorson said this is hilarious. I'll <laughs> remove you and, and bring you back one more time. And then okay, perfect. <laughs> or I'll try. Actually, I'll also, I did can. Instagram have their hour limit? Well, I don't think they do anymore, but to be honest, my 